Charlene O'Banion, a prison officer being accused of sleeping with an inmate. You felt me, I was like soaking through my clothes. After hearing rumors from an investigation was opened up. Charlene thinks she flew under the radar and got away, but what she doesn't know is that the detectives have all the evidence they need, and they're about to expose and embarrass her in the most brutal way possible. I just kind of want to talk to you about it and get your side of that story. I don't know anything about it. Okay. But the detectives have much more evidence than they're letting on. And where would you think that this allegation would come from if there's nothing to it. So there was an inmate um, named Coker, Justin Coker. Okay. He got out of here for, I don't know what period of time, and he tried to contact me on Facebook. He sent me a message and I blocked him on Facebook. Not trying to be rude here. I'm just, yeah. why would you expect this conversation to come up from that? Like now, if that happened a few months ago. Charlene claims that the only time she's had contact with Jason was a single time outside the jail bathroom. But the detective is about to share some evidence that instantly proves that Charlene is hiding something. I don't know exactly, but I was told that it was brought to somebody's attention, and then we looked at jail calls, and there's jail calls between you and Parker. Trying to lay Yo, her heart is ba boom. She's shitting her pants right now, bro. I guess a few years ago. We we talked and then I ended up here and then he ended up here. This led to them joking around with each other here, but nothing else. Or at least that's what she claims. In reality, the cops have recorded phone calls from inside the prison that tell a complete. She's a fucking idiot. <laughs> she calling a nigga in jail. Like, what do you expect? You don't think they track their fucking their story. phone lines, bro? So listen, from what I'm listening to on the calls, I take it as that you've given him oral sex at some point, is what no, I, I gather from these calls. No, that was, like, in the world. But we never, like, we never dated. We just... Okay. Just 15 minutes into this interrogation, Charlene's original story is seeming less and less like the truth. She's been caught in multiple lies, admitted to having sexual relations with Jason in the past, and calling him regularly from her own home. But the detective has some more questions pertaining to some more physical evidence. There may be some talk in the calls about, like, photographs. Have you given him any photographs? Mm -mm. I gave him a photograph of his mom, which he had asked for, and of his dog, Jax. But it seems that she forgot about a few vital pieces of information. Not least the facts that all phone calls placed from the prison are recorded. Oh my god. Bro, that is the dumbest shit I've ever devastating. heard. I got a lot of stuff to clean and get rid of before you come home. <laughs> just kidding. So, first of all, you don't think that nigga most likely don't have a home for herself. So he leeches on to you, so he has a place to stay. Come on, gang. However, with the language they've used so far, there's no evidence that the pair have actually engaged in any sexual acts. But that changes quickly as Jason begins to directly incriminate Charlene on the call. And you got a, a live ass fucking head game. Oh my god. Don't you get me thinking about that because it makes me so horny. Like just going back and thinking about yeah. that. I get your oh yeah, you felt me. I was like soaking through my clothes. You get very horny very easy. How that sounds from like my point of view. But to her credit, she's not going down easily. The detectives try asking her if she thinks Jason would cover for her, and she still doesn't break, sticking to her story that everything that happened happened outside of prison. You talk about how profound this was. Like just giving him this blowjob was, but you like don't remember anything about anything about it. It's like uh, telling me something, but you're having trouble coming up with details about it. You know what I mean? Like if it's that profound. I mean, I gave him a blowjob. How, how do you describe the blowjob? Or at least she was before a switch flipped, and she said this. I mean, what is it? Uh, I might have given him a blowjob. Aw, oh, shit. Uh, they didn't have shit on her, though. She would have been good. Now she admitted and now she in jail. Tough life. The secret's out, and Charlene has confessed. But this matter is more complex than it may seem. According to a 2005 report, federal law criminalizes all sexual relations and contact between prison staff and inmates, and that all sexual relations between staff and inmates are considered abuse, 
even if the act would have been considered consensual if it occurred outside of a prison. I'm going to ask, but I feel like I know the answer. I'm losing my job. So that's that's not really up to me. Um, internal Affairs is aware investigation is separate from ours because mm -hmm. there's it's, it's two totally different um, things. So, You're yeah. fucked. Yeah. As it turns out, Charlene would lose her job, and the only time she'd ever be allowed back in jail would be for the 100 days that oh, she'd be made it. to serve after being found guilty of sexual activity with a person in custody. That's the reaction. Comment down below if I'm tweaking or not. You did what I'm saying? If she wasn't really an idiot, if she was just, you did what I'm saying? Baby, I'm not this bitch, man.